Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Chris Pepper Stanley, Davy Mac Sports yeah. Program, uh, May 18th, 2011. Eastside Dave McDonald here, and some call me the Davy Mac. And this is the Sports Program live, recorded to tape. But you're hearing it for the first time, so it's live to you. I'm Dave McDonald. With me is Chris Pepper Stanley. Hey, what's up? Behind the camera, with the wires and the mics. Working it out. Let's hear it for Sean O. Hello. Hey. I noticed how Pepper didn't get a round of applause. No. I wonder what that's all about. Not very well liked. Uh, folks, we have a big show today. It's going to be huge. We have lots of playoff basketball, lots of baseball, lots of nonsense and wonderful treats for you. ESPN Sports Center people don't know how to do their jobs. Sarah Silverman was on the Fox Yankees Red Sox broadcast, and uh, a tiny bit of controversy ensued, I guess, if you want to call it that. Plus, we have an email that's very special, near and dear to my heart. But we do start out with the Jorge Posada Yankees nonsense that's going on currently as we speak, okay? Let me tell you something. If one thing gets my goat, it's a, an organization that just does not know how to treat their, their older legends, their superstars properly. I don't know if Brian Cashman has a brain tumor or if he is just turning into Mr. Burns from Springfield as we speak. His hair, everything is odd about this, this little guy. He's very squirmy to me. And the Jorge Posada, you're, you, you've all heard it by now. I mean, a brief run through, of course. He, you know, he didn't want to play on Saturday, this past Saturday, against the Red Sox on the national game. And uh, people speculate because he dropped, he got dropped to the ninth place in the batting order yeah he's over 24 against lefties or some ridiculous uh, yeah that's stat. that's i mean nevertheless he's a switch hitter yeah. i'm sure he'll get out of that funk um I i'm gonna say this and there are people in the new york media certain people with very large waistbands who have attacked jorge posada and there are lots of people nationally and little bobby valentine has to get uh, his nose involved in all this. <laughs> and, you know, when he's not making pasta or claim, did you know that, uh, what was it, he, Bobby uh, Valentine, yes, he claimed that he invented the wrap sandwich. I believe him. Yeah, this is, uh, it's actually available on YouTube somewhere. I don't even know. If we can't find it, that's fine, because it, I'll tell you the gist of it. He said that he kind of ran out of bread, regular sandwich bread, and had the idea for a wrap. Um, it's as insane as Dr. Evil saying his father invented the question mark. It, that's what it <laughs> sounded like to me. It, it, a rap? Someone tell the uh, country of Mexico that they're wrong, that Bobby Valentine invented the rap. Forget <laughs> about 200 years of that sandwich existing to the, our friends from the South. It was Bobby Valentine. Bobby V, baby. Someone had to invent it. Why not Bobby? 
I agree. Someone did have to invent it, and they did. Probably a good 150 years ago. Okay? Bobby Valentine did not invent the rap. I, that's not my point here. Here is my point. Everyone is wrong. You're all wrong! <laughs> Jorge Posada, this poor man, he gets kicked around worse than Chris Pepper Stanley's dog. Don't have a dog, Dave. Exactly. You don't anymore. That dog ran away after the treatment given to him by Pepper. Well, I stuck up for that dog, and I'll stick up for Jorge Posada. Oh, I well, listen to Bobby Valentine invent the rap. <laughs> okay, if he gets to the point, I don't know. <laughs> you know, he's wordy, but let's see. Let's see this if we can get back to back in 1980, so that's the date we're talking about, and... Um, you know, my banker wanted a club sandwich, and the toaster kept breaking, and I finally, after about the fifth try and fifth day, when he came in and asked for the same club, uh, same club sandwich, I asked him if a club mex would work, and oh. I didn't have the bread to toast. I had tortilla shells that I took the entire bacon, le lettuce, tomato uh, sandwich that you usually see in a club sandwich. I wrapped it in a tortilla. I melted cheese on the top of it on the nice. on the uh, little nice. broiler. Good. I cut it in threes. I put some toothpicks in it. Oh. I put some chips on the plate, and I said, "Tell him he has his club sandwich, and it's a club mex sandwich." From that day on, they called it a wrap. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, that and people say that they never heard of a rap before then, so then they start saying that Who? I invented the rap. Who said now, that? I don't know. I mean, I was Stop it right there, because then he just I'm goes on. I'm on Bobby's on. side. I'm and, on Bobby's side. And by the way, we know how sandwiches are served. You, you hear before, I didn't even hear that clip. And you heard it before, uh, I, how I said he was wordy. Do we mm -hmm. need to hear it? I, I, put a little, I put some chips on the plate. <laughs> well, he melt, he, well, I don't know I put, how he melted uh, the cheese. Then I put the chips next to it, and then I put some sauerkraut there. And I put a little, um, what's that stuff uh, in the little white cup? What is that? Uh, coleslaw. I put a little coleslaw there. And, um, you know, then I gave him a 7-Up, too. But I, I said, uh, I'm going to put this 7-Up in a glass on four ice cubes just to wash down the wrap. You know, because a uh, sandwich can make you thirsty. So here's a nice beverage. Then afterwards, what I did was, when he was finished with his meal, I emptied the plate, and I put the plate in the dishwasher. That's what we called it back then. Now, people tell me that they never had heard of a dishwasher before so 1980, so I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I'm not saying I invented the dishwasher, but then what I do is I put the plate in the dishwasher, and I put some what I call detergent in the dishwasher, and I put the dishwasher on clean, about 45 minutes later, the plate comes out. Going pretty in depth. No crumbs. <laughs> and um, before me, before More. 1980, <laughs> all, the, all the people used to have forests and their front lawns. So I concocted a device. Yeah. I called it a lawn mower. And I would push it. You call tall grass over, forests. Yeah, forests. And so I would push the lawn mower over these forests. Nice grass. And then I and then pe people say before 1980 uh. that um, and before 1980 <laughs> people would ride around with horses and carriages. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well that's not true. I mean, a hundred years before 1980. And then um, I got these things called aut automobiles, and we would they were horseless carriages really. He's a liar. This is why. This is between this and the mustache. I love the mustache gimmick thing. where he came out wearing a disguise. It was great. No, it wasn't great. I what is this? Saturday love, Night Live. I love every second of it. That you know, we're gonna play different characters. Yeah. Who is he? Peter Sellers now, where he he plays four Wish. different parts in one movie. <laughs> we don't we don't need that. So this is the guy. This is no. That's a perfect example of the type of guy who attacks Jorge Posada, okay? Jorge Posada, they don't say before the season starts, you know what, Jorge, your catching days are most likely behind you, but you'll catch every now and then. I mean, you know, maybe once every five, six games, you know. But the Yankees' backup catcher is Francisco Cervelli, 
Okay? The, the, he's, oh, he's fine. He's mediocre. He's not great. He certainly is not a good hitter. And he's okay defensively. So I would give him a B, maybe. So he's, he's good. He's not great. They're talking about this guy like he's Carlton Fisk, this Francisco Cervelli. <laughs> you can't have Jorge Posada come out every five, six games. He's broke down. You just say, you know what? You're not a catcher anymore. You're our DH. Then yeah. he gets off to a rough start. Not the only Yankee, by the way. They're all hitting poorly. Yeah, it's a train wreck. And you have uh, Girardi saying, hey, you're out. You're gone. No more DA, uh, I mean, no more catching for you, your DH. And now, against the Red Sox, national TV, we're going to bat you ninth. It's just Joe Girardi being vindictive <laughs> because this young man, this young 39-year-old. Yeah, it's not young man anymore, Dave. He took Girardi's spot, and we never looked back. So, and by the way, this Francisco Cervelli is mm -hmm. a clone of Joe Girardi. He's a decent defensive catcher. He has a little spark in him. Yeah, but you know what? Jorge Posada has had years where he's hit 30 home runs and years where he's hit 320. Yeah, he's lit up. But, you know, he's 39 years old. You don't choose a national game against the Red Sox to bat him ninth, embarrass this guy. This is after they take all of his catching responsibilities away from him. They treat him like garbage. They kick him in the knee. And for those of you who don't know, that hurts. Yeah, we know that getting kicked in the knee hurts. <laughs> and everybody knows that. You do this to Posada, number 20, mm -hmm. number one in your hearts. He's great. That's why it's really hot, too. The best catcher in the history of Major League Baseball ever of all time. I think you're just talking crazy at this okay? point. Okay. You no, treat him like that. Not okay. And then you're, this. He's obviously not the best catcher of all Best time. catcher ever. Ever. And this little worm, this Brian Cashman, not to be confused with my friend Kevin Cashman, <laughs> a.k.a. the Catman. Uh, it's a Catman, baby. Who has seen some of my videos on EastsideDaveCountry.com. How's he liking them? Loves them. Is he going to get into any? No, but he's now a part of, apparently my co-writer because he gave me an idea for a skit, as he called it. Oh, cool. He said, you're going to go on the street and ask strangers for a drag of their cigarette. <laughs> okay, all right, this is working well. All right, <laughs> that's the cat man's idea. And what's this? I got a name. No, that's it. He said, You come up with the name Johnny One Drag. <laughs> so I said, We'll do. Green light it. Will this be me every time and I'll pretend to be a stranger? <laughs> yeah, but you're gonna have to wear a hat or put in a ponytail, sure. okay. do something different. All right, you have to pretend that you're not the same guy over and over again. Mm. So I thought, Okay, that's a fun skit. Maybe we'll even shoot it tonight. Okay. I have to go home and <laughs> Nope. So, um, so uh, yeah, this Brian Cashman, he does this big announcement oh. where, um, yeah, I don't know. He just asked out of the lineup. Uh, there's no injury. There's nothing. Um, basically calling Jorge Posada a piece of trash. Yeah. This Thank you uh, for being a part of four championship teams. Grounds for really firing you at this point. Yeah, they, they overreacted. Just they didn't. Zero to they overreacted him saying he, was trying, he just wanted a day off. He was mad at Girardi. I know. And they were bringing up Girardi that he, he is, could get fired and cancel his contract. Girardi's a bully. Girardi's a bully. Yes, I know. Girardi is, he, he, I have, you know this. I have never liked Joe Girardi. I don't know. And that is Donnie Baseball's job. Donnie Baseball. And that did. poor man has to run that <laughs> crack ship in Los Angeles with he's the, busy, the four C's. He's busy running them into the ground, it's, okay? It's, you know, Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner over there, <laughs> and he's got to sit there. This should have been Donnie's job. He would have never, ever put Jorge Posada at ninth. First of all, you can't put Jorge Posada at ninth when you have... Why they have this allegiance to Brett Gardner is beyond me. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Ricky Henderson? They can't get Brett on. Gardner stinks! <laughs> He's down. terrible! Calm down. I am serious! I know you are. And, oh, you know what, Brian Cashman? Don't forget, Dave, other people have forgotten and let you off the hook. Davey Mack will never let you off the hook. It was the very first Davey Mack Sports Podcast, and I will bring it up for the rest of my life. Every show, we're doing a new segment called Melky's Corner, where Melky Cabrera is going to come in and say to Brian Cashman, 
face. You traded me to Atlanta oh. for, for Javier Vasquez, yeah. who came in, was awful. And it's not like, well, you know, some trades don't work. You know how I knew it wasn't going to work? How? Because he, Javier Vasquez had been on the Yankees, and he was terrible when he was. Yeah, Cashman's lost his mind last few years. He, first of all, it's, it's, it's been happening all the time. But you know what? Off, this is coming off the World Series, he trades Melky Cabrera. Yeah. Then he says to Giant Damon, ah, I don't want you. Yeah, gets rid of him. Then to Matsui. The, yeah. the World MVP. Series MVP. The MVP, yeah. You know what? You're a little old. <laughs> See you later. Beat it. You know um, who uh, could have helped their DH problems? Hideki Matsui <laughs> or Johnny Damon. And wasn't he jumping on the Jeter bashing bandwagon too in the offseason? Of course. Yeah. That was my next point. <laughs> so you take probably the the most revered Yankee since Mickey Mantle. And I hate to say that. That means over Donnie Baseball. Drinks harder than him too. <laughs> but Jeter, well, I did actually uh, drink with Derek Jeter once. Oh, well, yeah, I remember this story. Yes, in the Bronx. Um, coming off the World Series, he was dating a... Uh, member of the Fordham Dance Squad. How attractive was she? Right before she was attractive, but this is coming off the World Series. That lasted another week, week and a half yeah. until Mariah Carey found his phone number. Yeah. Anyway, he was there with Shane Spencer, and I bought him a shot, and I go, "Thanks for the ring, baby." I said, "Thanks for the ring, baby." What was this? A, a regular bar and up regular in the Bronx? bar. It was a Fordham bar yeah. in the Bronx. Yeah, Muggsies. Oh, look it up. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Bronx guy. Oh, all the whole time. BX. <laughs> All day, Why don't every you day. move from Astoria to the Bronx? Should I just move to the South Bronx? Yeah. Okay. What's I'll this allegiance to Astoria? <laughs> what is this? Oh, well, it's this rent control apartment. That's the allegiance. Okay. Well, that's fair then. But I can find a nice tenement in the Bronx, probably for the same amount of money. Yeah, I mean, there's, we're not talking about. I share a bathroom on the floor. We're, this and isn't brownstone out. penthouses in the Bronx. You can find a place. I'll, I'll start looking. I'll so, give an update next show. He says to Derek Jeter, um,. If Derek thinks he can make some more money somewhere else, I'm fine. Let him. Go ahead. Bye, Derek. Insane. He turns into the David Spade uh, airplane character. The bye bye. And it, it's but funnier. It, it, it's like that. What are you doing? Why? Why are you doing this to Derek? Now you're doing it to Jorge. Girardi's a jerk to Jorge. Yeah. And this poor man. And then these these the 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 the, the media. Sides against Hori Passat. He just wanted a day off. He said, you know what? I'm not day. Even if he did, even if he was offended by uh, getting put ninth in the lineup, that doesn't. So what? He wanted a day off. What's the big deal? The newest thing with the Yankees. Big Yankee, deal. Big deal. <laughs> New segment. <laughs> oh, oh, that's an old segment. <laughs> okay, a very old bad segment. Bad. Um, okay, fine, <laughs> fine. Listen, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> so he says. So, uh, so now the new thing is that uh, they say to Jorge Posada, um, now um, he's not batting against left-handed pitching anymore. Yeah, he's, they just take if there's a left-hander, he's not. He's right. not going anywhere. And he now. is, by the way, a switch hitting DH. Yeah. And he's a natural right-hander. So why you would take him out against left? He's struggled against lefties this year for some odd reason. He's doing really badly. He he's, is. He's, he's hitting poorly. Yeah. But he had two hits last night, didn't he? Sure did. Yep, he did. He's back. So the train wreck is full on. The Yankees' D train wreck is full on. Especially when their uh, setup guy, Ralph, Rafael uh, Soriano... Oh, that's just... This guy's a nut. He's useless at this point. But well, how much they pay him? What, $35 million or oh, something? Oh, sure. Yeah. Now, I can't... Apparently, Cashman was against that, so I can't blame Cashman for that one. That was the, the, the Steinbrenner boys. Well, they know what they're doing. Who, who should be, like, <laughs> villains in a Dukes of Hazard <laughs> episode. They're Steinbrenner boys. <laughs> yeah! Let's give a setup man $40 million, baby! Woo! <laughs> Come on, let's badmouth the captain, Derek Jeter. 15 years, five championships? Should have given us 10 more. That's 10 years of non-championships for the captain. He only... People, can you do the math? Derek Jeter gave us 15... 
years with five championships. That means he was uh, 10 for 15 in losing championships as far as I'm concerned. What a loser. The uh, Steinbrenner boys give Soriano all this money. He struggled at time. The first time he uh, blew a game. Can't bang out one inning. He um, the eighth. No. The first time he lost a game for the Yankees, he uh, basically got on a plane at you know uh, JFK Airport and flew to the Caribbean. Yeah, immediately got out of there, yeah. So no one was able to talk to him. Cashman yeah. had to call him and say, you, you, you know, he had to call the guy's agent and say, hey, you have to talk to the media after you blow a game. You just have to. Otherwise, they're going to kill you. you know, but, all right. So why? So, okay. Let the media kill you. What's the big deal? Yeah. I mean, everyone does it. Who cares? And then he comes out and you, you put together a string of games. Everyone's like, oh, Soriano's paying off. But um, he's hurt now. Mm-hmm. And so they have to put him on the uh, DL. And uh, they go to his locker room. And it's totally cleared out by him as he just, he's taking a vacation for those two weeks. <laughs> He's going back to wherever he's from. Hey, he needs to rest like, up. Yeah, no, yeah. Doesn't need to rehab. Doesn't need a trainer. No, 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 no. Doesn't need to, you know, get over his injury with uh, good physical sports therapy. medicine, physical therapy, whatever. No, he needs to go to Turks and Caicos. Then he says, right before this, um, uh, they said Monday night that uh, after he had missed the last two games against the Red Sox, um, he said, uh, well, it's not like I'm missing a lot because we're usually down in those parts of the game oh. where, uh, I would be pitching. So, I mean, you know, usually, you know, so my roles diminished. Yeah. I mean, you know, the team, usually I'd be pitching with a the lead. They're not in the lead. So, you know, they're not really playing well. And then he said, quote, I don't think the bullpen's the problem right now. I think it's the hitters, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. He's Willie Beeman. He's just attacking. <laughs> you just attacked <laughs> every offensive player, including A Rod and Teixeira and Robinson Cano and Jeter and so on. Every, yeah. You just said, I mean, no one says that in baseball. They give the Bull Durham cliche answers. He's going to get his car cut in half. Oh, it's like Shark. It's over. Yeah. Shark's going to be on him. Oh, my God. So the Yankees are just, it, it's over. Disband the team and the front office. I mean, what I think they should do, flip-flop. Put the uh, AAA team up into the big leagues. Wait, wait, wait. And put everyone down. I don't know if they should do that. In uh, wherever their AAA thing is, Columbus. That's it. You know? And let them, uh, let uh, A-Rod and Teixeira scrap it out in the minors for a little bit and ride the bus. <laughs> And give some of these young guys. In all honesty, they have a catcher. I mean, the Russell Martin's been okay. Yeah. But we don't need Cervelli as the backup catcher anymore. He had like a, a month and a half last year where he was hitting and he was fun and everyone liked him. And then it wore off. And he, I believe he hit um, minus .004 was his batting average for the last three months of the season. He actually owed <laughs> points for how poorly he hit. Okay. Now, if you did see uh, Brian Cashman's awful little impromptu press conference during the Fox game, there was also another situation uh, in the Fox booth. Sarah Silverman was uh, in the booth. And um, I-, I like Sarah Silverman, and, but at the same time, she's a risque comedian. A little bit. And you have her sitting next to two of the more humorless people robots in the world (laughs) joe buck had such little control over artie lang that artie lang got that man's hbo show canceled (laughs) yeah because he couldn't figure out how to just go with it no and so he get and he's the guy who when randy moss pantomimes taking his pants down but doesn't actually do it that's disgusting yeah i can't keep it together. tim mccarver has no idea what's going on he he's seen two movies and both of them have the name Major League in the title. Like, he has no culture. What, did he see the, the second Second two? one. Oh, just a se- and he saw the first. Minors? Yeah, he, no, he didn't see the third one. Oh, okay. Yeah, once you have Scott Bakula in it, yeah, he's out. That sense. Scott Bakula, may, who made two, three of the best, uh, or two of the best sports movies of all time. That, and of course, Unnecessary Roughness. I love that movie. <laughs> Remember when they lay in the road? 
Yeah, uh, no, uh, that was the program. That was the program. I get those two <laughs> messed up all the time. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> I've been drinking well, for the last decade. The program actually was a co- uh, basically a comedy, but that was supposed to be a, the, a true, like, you know, this is how it is in college football. Yeah, okay, sure. And it was as ponderous as the ESPN football show, which basically oh, what was, it called was again? just, uh, I forget, but that show was, I love that show. Yeah, but that was just, they, they had obviously seen Any Given Sunday. Yeah, it was Any Given Sunday, and, and they said, had a gay guy, they but, had a guy on But steroids. they couldn't figure, you know, with... with, with Commercial breaks and no cursing. Yeah. No one wanted to see I, any uh, of that. I still watched every episode um, while it was on. <laughs> but uh, so Sarah Silverman's in the booth, and you you just see Tim, McC- Tim McCarver doesn't even look her in the eye because Tim McCarver's from the old school where he probably sees like, what, why is there a woman here? <laughs> what, is, what is going on? In no sense. What's happening? I always loved when uh, after the Braves won their only World Series and Deion Sanders uh, dunked water all over Tim McCarver. And Tim McCarver got really mad and yelled at Dion. Goes, "You're a real man, Dion. You're a real man." It's like it's a World Series. Do you not know that people dump liquids on each other? You idiot! It's what people do. Champagne, beer, water. You're a man, Dion. You're a real man. Oh, shut up. If there was no Bob Gibson, there would be no Tim McCarver. I can't believe someone has gotten this far in his bro- And people say, you know, Tim, Tim McCarver is like to baseball what John Madden was to football. He is a superior analysis, uh, analyst. I have heard Tim McCarver say things like, you don't make the last out at third. Oh, really? Is that, re- is that what would we- that is as old of a baseball cliche and a baseball... Yes, of course not! You know why? You don't want to make outs at any base! Especially third, but fine. Tim McCarver has said things... You know, he, he tells us how to bunt. We know how to bunt. I got the Sanders McCarver, if you want to... All right. Deion Sanders dumping the water on Tim McCarver? Yeah. Okay, Producer here's. complained to National League President Bill White last night. McCarver wants a meeting with White as soon as he can get one. And after this confrontation, Tim McCarver confronted Sanders. McCarver's right here. Right now, hey, you I are got a real food. man. You know that? Oh, this, you are a real man, Dion. I'll say that. Loosen up, Tim. Or get out of a World Series l- locker room for crying out loud. You know, the guys have just won a championship. They're going to throw water around. Holy mackerel. Um... So there's Sarah Silverman in between those two idiots, and uh, she then is talking about how she's a Red Sox fan and this and that, and uh, I believe we can say this on the Davey Mac Sports Program, Mm. because we have to say what she said, because it got bleeped, but she calls people, like herself, she's from New England, she, uh, people who root for the Red Sox, she calls them mass holes. Oh. Okay. No, that's not a curse. It isn't because it's Massachusetts. Massachusetts. And yet uh, they bleeped it out. So here's the thing of them bleeping it out. Although I'm sure you enjoyed that championship <laughs> season of the Red Sox back in 2004. Uh, it was bittersweet. Why? I'm going to say, well, it was incredible. Coming back like that was incredible. But I'm going to be honest. Being a Red Sox fan is about being a loser. <laughs> And it, it was very uh, identity crisis-y to win. And, you know, as Red Sox fans, we, uh, they're mass You can Keep say that because it's with an M. With, a, with an M. And uh, it doesn't, it's not as uh, charming when you're winning. No. And a mass have to, you have to appreciate a team that comes back from right. down three. So then, they, by the way, do you, do, now do you see my point that I made a couple of weeks ago about Tim McCarver and his, I mean, uh, um, Joe Buck and his voice? What's happened to Joe Buck that he can't talk anymore? He's dead inside. I mean, do you hear that voice? He, there's no life to him. And his voice is changing in this weird, like, there's like, oh, like phlegm or always in his voice now. Maybe it was just Arnie Lang thing. It's oh. just broke him down. Do you, um, do you, uh, how did you feel about that championship? Like, well, give, clear your throat. You're a broadcaster, and let's get a little juice during this game. It's Yankees Red Sox here. Um, so there it is. They bleeped her. No one from the Fox Broadcasting tells him that uh, they bleeped her. So then at the end of the thing, the uh, Tim uh, uh, Joe Buck says, um, 
You made it through. No bleeps. <laughs> and the 10 million people watching it said they Wait should bleep twice. Yeah, you're on delay. What's going they on dumped, here? It dumped out. And honestly, come on, Fox. Will you? You have, first of all, this, I was watching the game. This happened at close to 9 o'clock at night. Secondly, it's not a curse. Thirdly, you have Family Guy and these other, you know, cartoons that have said much worse. Will you give Sarah Silverman a break here? Or don't put her in the booth! I'm sweating! It's not against the law to say assholes, Fox. I am going to sue you, and I'm suing Pepper, what, and I'm what? suing Sean O, what are you suing and I'm for? suing Chris Stanley, I'm the same and Sean, me? and I am sh- suing Pepper, and, you're just, and you're just naming Sean people that are in front of you, and Pepper. And I'm suing everyone now because I am sick of this. I am sick of the Yankees. The Yankees will finish. What's their? Uh, the Yankees are, I think, 22 and 20. Yeah. All right, we'll say they finish uh, 30 and 132 this year. So they get, <laughs> wait, hold on, whoa. 30 and 132. It's wins. over! It's going to be a long season. I am telling you for a fact the Yankees will not make the playoffs. Now, let's keep this in mind. This is the New York Yankees we're talking about here. This will be two years out of four that Girardi has missed the playoffs. Joe Torre managed for 12 years. You know how many playoffs he missed? Point zero, my friend. Now, maybe I am going back on something two years ago where I wanted to not only uh, have Joe Torre out of Yankee Stadium, but I think I actually want him excommunicated from the Catholic Church. Uh. But my point was always this. You give that job to Don Manuel, someone who's tactful. Just just Don Manuel, that's all you want. Well, the problem is Girardi's (laughs) this hard, tough guy... And now Cashman, who couldn't be more of a dweeb, now he thinks he's tough. So he can start throwing these comments around against these great legendary players. I've had it with the Yankees. They're done. I will guarantee you this. The Mets, 92 and 70. Yankees, 30 and 132. That's my prediction. All right? Davey Mac Sports Program. Eastside Dave McDonald, a.k.a. Davey Mac. Chris Pepper Stanley. Yeah. That's me. Then Sean O. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you just keep it here. There's more to talk about. Yeah. You know me and my boy we was down in North Carolina, not too far from Winston Salem. Five old stars trying to talk some stuff. I said the police might arrest me, but the judge gonna set me free. One, two, three, one, two, three. Davey Mac Sports Program. Hello. Eastside Dave McDonald, a.k.a. Davey Mac. Chris Pepper Stanley. Hi. Sean O. Hey. And uh, we're here, and we're talking to you about the sports, and we've, I've calmed down a little bit. I was a little bit rattled, I it must say. Threatened to sue me. You? And me. Yeah. Okay, I didn't mention this. I'm blacked out right now, my friend. Uh, I, had, I, I was... I'm doing a Kitty Dukakis thing where I just go straight to rubbing alcohol. Well, you're okay. going to love this show when you get to hear it. Well, I, I can't wait. I like I listen to all of it. Uh, probably don't even need to tell anyone. It makes no sense. But you can hear it on iTunes. But you can also hear it on Stitcher.com. And then if you go to hearustalk.com slash recommended, there are three different venues which play the Davy Mac Sports program. Okay. So you have that going for you. 
Some people say they don't like the iTunes. They like the Stitcher. That's fine. I, you know, whatever. It's a nice app. Yeah. Get it on your phone. And if you really are kind of feeling lazy about it, just go to twitter.com slash Dave, and uh, I have links there. One of those tweets will have links to the Davey Mac Sports program. Um, we got a, uh, a very interesting email, Pepper, that uh, I thought uh, you know the, uh, I would share with the audience here. Um, let me see here. Here's the email. Uh, it says, uh, Hi, Dave. This morning while driving my wife to work, I noticed a white Mercedes sports coupe driving around my neighborhood. What is weird about this is that the car had New Jersey plates on it. The first letter on the plates was a K. Do you know who this may have been? I know you're from New Jersey, so I thought that you might know who this was and why they were driving around my neighborhood in New Brunswick at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. Should I be concerned? Signed, SS. Um, very, very interesting and uh, good question there from SS. That's crazy, yeah. Um, and the answer, New Jersey. He knows that I'm from New Jersey. Yeah. So he saw the New Jersey license plates and the letter K. And uh, yes, in fact, that was my friend Patrick Flannery. Um, with the uh, New Jersey license plates, you don't letter know, you K. Don't know this person. My, is. New Jersey is a big state. Right, but my friend Patrick Flannery has a uh, a car with the license plate that starts with K. I, I would go so far as to say it was a K and a V, and then I forget the rest of it. Just because you're from Jersey doesn't mean you know everyone from Jersey. And this guy, is, this guy who emailed is obviously, I don't know what's wrong with him, but it's you're sounds calling crazy. SS paranoid for he some reason. He might be paranoid and crazy. Yeah. No, why do you think that? And why why do you not believe me? Because there's I'm gonna guess, I don't know, ten thousand cars with the start with the K and that are What in about New the New Jersey license plates? Yeah, in Jersey. How about you the fact that I'm let me finish. How about you I'm don't know this person. What about I'm from New Jersey? Yeah, I believe that you're from New Jersey. So you don't think that's my friend Patrick Flannery? No, huh? I know that it isn't. Okay. Your friend. Well, here's where you're wrong, Dad and Thomas. I'm not wrong. You're Patrick lying. Patrick Flannery, uh, come on out. What? I didn't <clears throat> Hey, Pepper. See? You trying wow. to say I'm not uh, rolling around Texas? How'd this guy even get in? I, That's really my friend, Patrick Flannery. Why are you always doubting on Davy Mac? And Patrick, what's right. your license plate? Uh, K. K. Done. <laughs> done and done. Guess I'm going to get that letter. I, I apologize. Thank you. Apology accepted. Thank you. Wow, I didn't really expect to see this one coming. <laughs> really thought you were lying. Thank you. Now let's just listen to this great music. <laughs> For a yeah. few more seconds. <laughs> Email music. So once again, Pepper was wrong and Davy Mac was right. No more ridiculous points. Apparently we're done with that company. Where's our money? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, um, there's another clip uh, that I found, Davy Mac found. This was on uh, ESPN Sports Center. To set it up for you, this uh, one sports center is saying, uh, this game's in progress, okay? And it's, it's l literally eight seconds long. But I just wanted to show you how incapable these sports center people are these days. They are so concerned with writing down their little one-liners and fun jokes and all their little sketches that they don't even know how to broadcast anymore. Pepper, do you have that clip? Ms. and Indians playing as we speak. Actually, they're not playing. We've got a rain <laughs> delay right now in the bottom of the first inning. Okay. He said, I know the audio quality is not great because, again, I took it off my TV. But he says the Indians are playing as we speak. Actually, they're not playing. Hey, let's hear that again, though. Ms. and Indians playing as we speak. Actually, they're not playing. We've got a rain <laughs> delay right now in the bottom of the first inning. Actually, we're completely wrong. <laughs> The Indians and Nats playing as we... No, nope, no, nope, they're not. Okay, so they are playing as we speak. No, wait a second. They're not. They're not playing. No. They're not playing? Haven't been playing for a while. They are playing. No. I'm not sure the definition of not and are. Are they playing? They are playing? No. No, they're not. Okay, they're not playing. So the Nats and Indians playing as we speak against the... Wait, no, they're not playing. The Indians and Expos playing as we speak. No, wait. The Nats are the Expos. Okay, the Expos are now the Nats? 
Is that what they're telling me? Okay, I don't know. How could you not know that? I'm not sure. Now, what happened to the Washington Senators? Are they playing as we speak? Oh. No. Okay, wait, yes? No. no. What about the Philadelphia Athletics? What? Oakland? No. They're not playing as, okay, so they're not playing, they are, they are, they're not. Brooklyn Dodgers facing off against the New York Giants in the Polo Grounds tonight. Wait, hold on. No, they're not playing as we speak. They are playing. They're not. No. They're not playing as we speak. Tim Burton set to make Superman with Nicolas Cage. And Wait, no, wait, that's not happening either. That's okay. Hold on. I got some wrong info. That's not happening. Not happening. Harmon Killebrew doing a live and well, he'll be at the <sighs> Twins game this yes. weekend. And what? Yeah. What happened? Died. He died. So he that's not gonna happen. No. No Harmon Killebrew. No, you got some bad information. Okay. Fine. Lakers and Thunder set to gear up for the Western Conference Finals. Kobe uh, Bryant's gonna have a huge tournament. <laughs> there you go. I mean, it. what? Lakers got eliminated. They got eliminated. So that's not going to happen. Okay, we need two categories where we put things into happened and not happened. And we have it nice and clear. Maybe a blackboard. Roddy Piper? <laughs> things are happening and not happening. So wait a second. You're, are you telling me that I hit Snooker with a watermelon? No? It was a coconut? Yeah. A coconut or a watermelon? I don't know. They're both almost equally racist <laughs> and crazy. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Big prediction for American Idol. Casey Abrams will win the finals. Since no one watches American Idol, yeah. I'm going to have to say, wait, that didn't happen either? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one. Yeah, I have to, I told Pepper, final. I had told Pepper I have to race home tonight because not only is it the big Heat Bulls game two, but it's the American Idol. We're getting right down to it. Okay, we're we're in the top, the minus three. I figure I'll picture and picture it. Don't care. American Idol though, that's gonna have the main stage. Why watch this show? Because I can watch a basketball game on yeah. the little picture with no sound. Davy Mac don't need uh, announcers to tell him how to feel about a basketball game. Uh -huh. I don't need Reggie Miller yelling at me, giving me the choke sign like I'm Spike Lee. Okay, I don't need that. All right, I can watch my own. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have the volume. Well, how else am I supposed to judge these youngsters and, and their singing abilities? Side along. If I have them on the small screen. So it's picture in picture. They get the big screen, and the basketball game gets the small screen. Okay? It's exciting stuff. Or what I might do is just have American Idol on the whole TV by itself. Yeah. And then on the little television in my garage, have the basketball game in there. The zone. Yeah, in the fun zone. The fun zone, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I might do that, and then I'll just run back and forth like that. Great. Okay? I'm glad you just laid out your entire evening for me. <laughs> Can sports center people get things right? Can any of them get the things right? No, they want to be entertained. They don't care about being right. I saw this Linda Cohen, right? Oh, boy. She says this, right? Uh, someone. I don't even know. It's just uh, that's unimportant, whoever the hitter was. But a hitter hits the ball. Okay? They're showing highlights. And Linda Cohen says, just a bomb, a bomb from Lance Berkman. I mean, a bomb. Then they show the home run. It went into the second row. <laughs> <laughs> right over the 315 <laughs> side. He hit the baseball 320 feet. There's no concept of what a bomb That's is. That's huge. You don't Crushed use it. bomb. They're... they're Words mean things. A bomb Since in when? baseball Since is, when? you know, 30 rows deep or 430 feet. It's You're not talking crazy. a chintzy little thing. And it's certainly not the contradiction, man, with Nats and uh, playing as we... Sp no, they're not playing. They, they are, but they're not. Brings me to Mike Francesa. He's on my hit list again, Pepper. I'm a guy to tell you, this man... Give him a break. This man is just killing me. He yelled at every single caller the other day. <gasps> but then the other, the, the instant that someone calls his, uh, or he has a writer on. Yeah. Uh, George Vesey wrote this Stan Musial book. And Mike could not be, uh, you know, just on his knees with this guy. I mean, just, just giving him the celebrity superstar treatment. 
Mm-hmm. Even his voice changes when he talks to uh, celebrities or, or sports writers or athletes. And you're just saying, why can't you ever be nice to anyone else? Phony. Is it all about status with Francesa? Mm-hmm. He was talking about the Posada situation. What was he have to say? I'm, I'm glad they did it. I'm glad. You know, it, the worst thing you can do to, uh, to a team is to say, I'm not playing today. That's the worst thing you can do. Uh, hey, Mike, how many vacations do you take a year? About 15 weeks. I take 15 weeks of vacation. What I do oh. is I go out to the Cheesecake Factory and I say, give me everything on the menu. No Cracker Barrel. I got to feed me and Ro. And what thing we like to do is eat. And then I put some of the food in my goodie bags and give it to my horse that I <laughs> co-own with Parcells. Did I mention that uh, anywhere less than 36 times? Now that's horse racing season? Yeah, me, Francesa. I co-own a horse with Bill Parcells. Let's see any of you little maggots own a, a horse with a football coach. Is he cutting es- a wrestling promo? <laughs> especially one as esteemed as Bill Parcells. And then sometimes... Parcells and I, we go down to the Jersey Shore and we eat a lot of lobster at the Parker House in Seagate. T-shirt time. T-shirt time. You know how I know this? No. Because Davey Mack saw me. And Wait, I, you know who Davey Mack is? I may or may not have been hit, nearly hit. Wasn't hit, but nearly hit with a water balloon. Because <gasps> the Parker House is an outdoors eatery where you can sit on the porch and eat lots of lobster nice. and drink lots of Diet Cokes. Because as long as I drink Diet Cokes, I won't tip in over 500. I'm right at 489. And I, so that's why I do the uh, 10, 12, 16 Diet Cokes a show. Keep them fit. But I'll tell you what, Jorge Posada, don't take a day off. Now, you ask me, 360, how many days? 369 days in a year? 65. Right. That's right, Eddie. 365, Eddie. Hey, that's a bump up on your salary. You're going to go from 28 to 28.2 thousand. Thanks, boss. You got it, Addy. One of the Diet Coke. <laughs> anyway, out of all that 369 days a year. Here's shock on this one. I probably work, let's see, I take off for Christmas. Then I take off for New Year's. Oh, yeah, I take off for Labor Day. Yeah. I take off for Memorial Day. Day. Independence Day. Thanksgiving. Hallow's Eve. Immaculate Reception. I'd say I work about 17 days a year. But God forbid, Jorge Posada, you take a day off? Uh Uh-uh. No. I'm Mike Francesa. I'm fat. Letting that guy tell Jorge Posada he's not allowed to take a day off. Sometimes I, 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 I... He'll go two months without doing a show. Anytime in Feb... He takes basically February off. He just goes in the best of? No, they don't do that. Oh, good. On Sports Talk Radio, yeah, you have someone sense, fill right? in. All right, yeah. great. Yeah. You have someone fill in. Best of. Best calls ever made. <laughs> they would, <laughs> <laughs> they'd all be him yelling at people. John from Astoria. You're on with Fred Sessa. Yeah, Mike. Um, I just want to say I really love your show. And uh, No, you don't. You don't love my show. Victor, Brooklyn, on the air. Mike, um, you're very gifted. No, I'm not. I actually suck. Eddie. Yeah. Why you put these calls through? They're complimenting you, Mike. No, they're not. Forget about that bump up in salary, Eddie. But this is the best stuff. This happened before. You gave me that bump Did up. Did I mention I own a horse? <laughs> With who? Not- oh, did you own it outright? I own, a, I own a horse not only with Bill Parcells. All right. I just signed a deal where I co-own a horse with Mr. Keith Hernandez. We call it Mustache. That's the name of Keith's horse. I said, Keith, that's a funny name. You got it. He said to me, Mike, mm. you ever been on Seinfeld? Of course you said no. I said I hadn't been, not yet, but I plan to. Boss, Seinfeld's been canceled. I years. was talking about the marriage show, his reality show that he had. When Me he- and Ro need some work. 
we constantly have this one bickering argument where she gets mad because 24 hours a day, I watch my nine television screens and my two-year-old almost fell into a pool. What, was I supposed to watch everything? How am I supposed to not watch AAA uh, baseball and a toddler at the same time? I don't know how Tom Pop is going to work this out. Plus, I had a lot of Twinkies to eat that day. I was feeling a little tired. Are you diabetic? <laughs> Probably. I told the fan, I say, you know, you try to give me that Jorge Posada treatment. I'm out, okay? My ex-partner, the uh, mad dog, he's doing just fine. I feel like I'm getting fatter as we speak. Is it possible to breathe? And, is there a lot of calories in oxygen? The stuff we're pumping in the studio, yeah. <laughs> Mad Dog has a uh, commercial on uh, Sirius XM. <laughs> Here's his, uh, we don't have it, uh, but I, I, will, I will give it to you. He says, um, <laughs> Can't th wait. this was the clip. Yeah. I promise you this is the clip. I believe you. He, they go, uh, Chris Mad Dog Russo talking to you about sports. And he goes, and the bottom lesson is this. You mess with America, we're going to get you. <laughs> it might take us 10, 10 years, but we're going to get you. What? <laughs> I go, what? That's the Chris Mad Dog Russo mixing it up in the sports world. Talk about jihad. <laughs> Bottom line is, if you're in the Taliban or Al-Qaeda, we're going to find you, we're going to hunt you down, and we're going to get you. Didn't know he was so passionate about that. And I'll say something else, too. That president in Iran, Ibadabad, don't talk any more smack at the World Trade. Uh, the, what's that called? <laughs> United I'm, I'm Kingdom. not going to help you. What is that? The world, uh, what's that place? All the dignitaries come in, New York. Come on. World, um, <laughs> the on. World Leader Council. No one tell <laughs> the World Leader Council, that's it. <laughs> the WLC. The WLC. Wait. The UN? United Nations. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a while. Let me tell you it's something. <laughs> that about about, you come in here, uh. we're going to get you. <laughs> Bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, you mess with America, you're dead. <laughs> Christopher Mad Dog Russo giving you sports every day. You're dead. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Listen. Those guys weren't number one for a reason, Pepper, okay? They were number one, my hey, friend. Hey, I'm not bashing them. They were like the Davey Mac sports program of terrestrial of AM radio for a while. All right. Did you know that? Dominating. They had very good ratings. Yes, I know. I was aware of the they, show. I've lived in New York for a while. 1.2 in the ratings books, okay? We're talking big numbers, yeah. all right? Um, I guess that brings us to some uh, National Basketball Association where the Heat, they fall to the Bulls. And, uh, I mean, the Bulls, I don't know if you saw any of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Did you or didn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you work for Sports Center? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> really? No, I didn't. Nope. <laughs> I'm lying. Nope. Uh, yeah, they fell uh, to the Bulls. They got <laughs> destroyed by the Bulls, let's face it. And I'm thinking about making another bet. Come on, lay it down. You I'll make it right hand. now. You got the hot hand. Make eight, it. Eight bucks. Let's see it. Eight bucks? Eight bucks on uh, Bulls tonight. I love it. Now, you would think, well, let's see about it. I mean, would think, think about this. If the Bulls, who thoroughly No, it was a beating. I, 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 was, I was fooling around before. Dude. Okay, but what I'm saying is, would that be a decent bet to make? Or would you say, listen, when a team as talented as the Heat, with Dwayne Wade and LeBron, they get pummeled. Does would would pride guarantee them to come out strong on game two? I don't two? know. I think a lot of sports pundits would say that. Yeah, they would. Um, eight bucks here <laughs> on the Bulls. On the Bulls. Come on, do it, do it. Okay, there, sent. Eight oh bucks. Oh my God. Okay, so that put that in because I need. I, I I realized why Pepper is such a gambling degenerate. And it's because it's fun. Because it's fun? Yeah. <laughs> because it's great when you win, right? Well, it makes the games way more exciting. <laughs> yeah. When I have money, especially with these NBA playoff games, I've been so excited by all these games. I'm telling you, this has been one of the best. You know, they say the ratings have gone way up. And the people who have been hurt by this is baseball. 
because this is, you know, good baseball time right now. April, May, and it's early in the season that every fan is, still has some hope. Mm-hmm. And no one's really run away with anything. The Indians have played the best in both leagues, but, I mean, you know. I mean, that's why I do think the Indians, it's a weaker division. You're going to see them and the Tigers make the playoffs. Yankees are out, as I told you. They'll be 30 and 132. I don't know mm-hmm. if that's going to Red happen. Sox and Rays, that's the two teams that will, are going to vie for this first place uh, Eastern division. Um, Charles Barkley then says that the Miami Heat, they have terrific players, but when it comes to the team getting defensive about people taking shots at them, he calls them a, quote, whiny bunch, end quote. Um, He says that LeBron was still mad at him because he, uh, Charles, criticized the decision. (laughs) I mean, if LeBron is that upset, then he he just simply is not focused. He doesn't have his priorities straight. I'm just going to be on Charles Barkley's side. As I will always be on Charles Barkley's side. Yeah, why wouldn't you be? You know? Um, It's crazy that LeBron is holding these grudges with these people. He's very hurt. He just wanted to play basketball with his buddies. Taking a shot at Michael Jordan. Yeah. During that commercial. That was ridiculous. Just it's because insane. Michael said, listen, I, I wouldn't have gone away to a different team. It's a legitimate point. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something else that Davy Mac was on very early on. You know that I said, Chris Bosch played well in game one. He does not fit that team. Then we hear that the, the, the guy who really wanted to come to Miami was Carlos Boozer, who hasn't scored with Chicago, but he is a big guy who gets rebounds. That's the, that's the guy. Had they gotten Carlos Boozer, yeah. they would have won probably 14, 15 championships in a row. What? So with this game, too, this is huge. Yeah. Now let me ask you another question. Go. I'd like, Shoot. I'd like you to chime in. Shoot. I'm talking um, Haley, I'm talking Lauren, and I'm talking Scotty McCreary. Who should I put money on to uh, win this American Idol? Because that's the other big sporting event tonight. It's A, it's not sports. B, I don't watch the Well, show. who at least gets eliminated? Because we have to eliminate one person from the final. They get eliminated tonight? Yeah, one. Uh, describe me. Describe who these people are. Then, is the kid who had the really deep voice in? Sky McCreary is the uh, country He's going to win. He's going to win. Um, so he's safe. So you, yeah. it's between Haley, who is kind of a Janis Joplin, but uh-huh. cute California girl. Uh. Lauren, also cute. Um, has a couple pounds on her, but but cute. And she does a southern thing, but not overly modern country, like just a southern type of thing. But not, is it old school country? Or she's mixed it up enough that she's done a Joplin song too. Like, oh. you know, so you have two girls. Get rid of her. Get rid of her. Get rid of Lauren. She's okay. not focused. She doesn't know what she's doing. Okay, and fine. She's, yeah. Fine. Yeah. So I got that. Yeah. Now, the Mavericks and Thunder played last night, and Dirk Nowitzki had. 48 points. Uh, Jason Terry, 24. Kevin Durant had 40 for the Thunder, but of course the uh, Mavs won uh, 120 to 112. There's no way that they're going to be stopped, okay? This ain't happening. If you wanted a prediction, and I know that you do, all the time, Mavericks will win the NBA Finals this year. That's it? That I can bank on. I I guarantee it. And then people in Dallas will say, Jerry Jones, who? Emmett Smith, who? They forget about the, all that. Troy Aikman, who? I don't know about that one. Okay. Right. I don't think anyone really likes Jerry Jones. <laughs> uh, you They'd know, probably be happy to forget about him. Some of those other cowboys. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Herschel Walker, who? Yeah. Right. Roger Staubach, who? <laughs> Tony Romo. Tony Romo, who? Just trying to think of Cowboys now at this point. Uh, Tony Dorsett, who? Okay. Great, yeah. Got it. The Dallas Mavericks will win the NBA Finals. That's just, you, you need to put that into the bank. Lock it up. You have to. You have to. When Davey Mack tells you something like that, you got to listen to him. Yeah, because um, he's a general gambler now. Hell yeah. Exactly. Uh, a fun story. A nice story. A guy uh, got sentenced in Oklahoma, a lifelong Larry Bird fan, Boston Celtics fan. He got sentenced to 30 years. Oh, for what? Uh, some sort of assault and armed robbery at a little Caesars pizza shop. So apparently he wanted $200. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, little Caesars still exists? 
<laughs> and why, why not a bank, you idiot? He got 30 years for that, for that armed robbery. Pizza, yeah. pizza. Um, his involvement in armed robbery at Lil Caesar's Pizza Shop. Yeah. So uh, it's Oklahoma, like I said. They're very strict down there. 30 years, right? Yeah. So because he's a Celtics fan and Larry Bird fan, he yeah. asked the judge, can you give me 33 for Bird? God, you're lying to me. No, I'm not. <laughs> and the judge said, okay, <laughs> you got it. There you go. <laughs> for the bird man, all right. <laughs> Here's three more years. Can you imagine just like Larry Bird just perusing the internet and what? seeing that It's like Google alerts on his name. <laughs> it's like, wait, bird, 30, what? <laughs> what is this? Uh, I, the guy's lucky he's not a Rodman fan when he used to wear 97. Uh. That would have been worse. How old is this guy, does it say? No, but I saw a picture of him. His name is Eric Torpy, and I saw a picture of him, and he looks like a reasonably young guy All right. who could, you know, 30 years, he might be in his early 60s. And at that point, you know, every year must feel like a decade. Yeah. And he's going to be saying, I could have been out. I have to wait three more years. Well, hey, he loves for bird. For this bird nonsense. Bird's going to be dead by the time <laughs> he gets out. Oh, insanity. Um... I don't know if you heard about the Mets now have to pay Bobby Bonilla $1.2 million a year. What? Boy, those guys are a bunch of geniuses. God, it's just the worst. They've been franchise. a horrible organization for years. So they, they were getting into some uh, trouble, uh, I think, uh, you know, in the late 90s. And they, had, they owed Bobby Bonilla $12 million. And they made a deal. If we, if we you know, can we push off paying you and then we'll pay you what we owe you plus interest. Oh, God. So he goes, right. so, okay, I'll take that. The Mets, apparently not knowing uh, how the American how works. economy <laughs> or interest works. <laughs> Bunch of business geniuses. Gee, I wonder why they got swindled by Bernie Madoff. So he, Bonilla took that $12 million and has put it in and has basically converted it to nearly $30 million. So for the next 25 years, he gets paid $1.2 million. For the next 20 Five years, he won the lottery. He, he gets paid <laughs> $1.2 million. That is awesome. And I never liked Bobby Bonilla as a baseball player. No. My friend, there. Congratulations. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. There you have it. So that's your sports, okay? As a quick aside, uh, Tony La Russa and... Uh, Dusty Baker hate each other. Tony LaRusso, of course, the Cardinals. Dusty Baker now managing the Reds. They hate each other. So the Reds broadcaster, Marty Brenneman, said um, that the Cardinals were out of line for thinking that one of the Reds threw at a Cardinal on purpose. And uh, um, Tony LaRusso said he uh, earned the right to get to the Hall of Fame. Now he ought to keep earning that respect instead of abusing it. Basically telling this old man, Marty Brenneman, shut the F up. Don't bother me. It's basically like digging up Phil Rizzuto <laughs> and urinating all over his bones. You know, certain times when they're these guys are these old baseball broadcasters, just let them talk crazy. <laughs> no, attack them, no. I mean, who just because they're old, they get carte blanche. You're, 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 what are you going to attack Harry Carey and attack all these... Bash him. Nearly senile gentlemen. Davey Mac Sports Program. Eastside Dave McDonald, a.k.a. Davey Mac. Chris Pepper Stanley, what Sean up? O. Hey, we Bye. did it. And, uh, Skyman. I mean, it was another four, five star one. So if you want to put it in the iTunes, you can. Yeah. Whatever. Five. But anyway, we had a good time, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Mm -hmm.